body of the meeting. Um, we have apologies from Councillor Wiley and Councillor Staines. No further. I'll move that they be sustained. Councillor seconded by Councillor Lord. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, no. That's agreed. Uh, and, and I'll also move, in terms of the confirmation of the agenda, that the committee confirms the agenda with the following alteration, namely in regard to Standing Order 21-1, options for speaking and moving, that option C be adopted in relation to moving and seconding and speaking to amendments. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Walker, those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, no. That's agreed. That takes us to the declarations of interest, and I'll move that we note the elected member's interest register as attached and confirm the proposed management plan there too. Yep. I have a seconder from Councillor Walker. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, no. That's agreed. That takes us to the Part A reports. Ms Graham and Mr Pickford, the planning and environment non-financial activity report for the two quarters ending 31 December 2019. Greetings, Andrew. Um, the floor is yours. Do you want to make any, uh, any comment before we take questions, Ms Pinfold? No, we're, we're happy to take questions. Councillors, questions of item five. Councillor Lord. Yeah, um, Nicola, and, uh, uh, just the same question. I've got um, satisfaction with regulatory services. It seems to be a bit of a downward trend. Is that the ROS survey again? So it's, it's, the, it's the same issue we discussed, previously. discussed earlier. Okay, thank you. Councillor Van der Vos. Specifically looking at building consents on page 21, the graph shows that we've We've put the bad old days of 2015-2016 uh, behind us and that um, uh, a very high percentage of your building consents are, are now within 20 days. I am still, well not still, I've just recently been made aware of uh, problems that some developers have had with what they consider to be excessively rule bound processes with the building consents. So the time taken isn't so much of a problem these days, apparently, um, but the fact that um, a very, very um, prescriptive uh, uh, looking at the government regulations is happening here in Dunedin that some of these developers don't encounter in other jurisdictions. And I'm wondering if you have any comment on that, whether you've had similar feedback from especially uh, housing developers. I'll throw the chair last, Mr Henderson, to try to that question. Just <coughs> so did you take that, uh, those complaints about those matters to anyone, or is this the first time you've raised them with staff? Um, not that I feel obliged to answer the question. I think it's out of order, but I have... Well, I'll decide what's in order and what's not, Councillor. So would you answer or not? Um, I object to your attitude, if you don't mind. C Councillor, and, I, I... And I, I, I was Councillor, about to answer and so Councillor. Councillor, that's all I was asking, and now you've responded that exchange was totally unnecessary. Well, I think I am, and if you're going to argue with me, you'll be departing the meeting. Would you like to respond? Um, certainly from a, um, a developer point of view, I mean, we are a thorough council. Uh, we have a very small amount of liability claims. Um, we are recognised as one of the top um, consenting authorities in the country, um, as identified by the accreditation IANS. Um, but if there are specific instances where we are being overly detailed, happy to take specific instances by the developers on a one-to-one -one basis to give me a ring. Um, yeah, so I'm not overly aware of detailed or, um, I guess, an ongoing issue. 
Okay, and I'm very grateful that we do have uh, much less in the way of liability claims than we have had in the past, and I recognise that in the past uh, there's, been, there's been an excessive laxness that actually caused a whole lot of problems, especially in specific areas of the city. Um, so I'm very grateful that we now have a much better um, uh, rate of granted within 20 days. Um, however, there is the pushback from certain developers, and I will ask them to contact you uh, personally and uh, hopefully sort out a situation where they feel that they will be going elsewhere because it's just too hard here. That would, yep, be, that would be extremely helpful if you did that, Councillor. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, Councillor Elder. Thank you, Chair. Um, just related to growth, actually, and planning for growth, um, and I note um, on key highlights that that's a, a big issue and it relates also to processing 22% more applications. How is that planning going across the city, you know, across the um, departments? Oh, we, have Anna, we have Dr Anna Johnson here who's been <laughs> sitting waiting in case there were any questions about the growth work, so she's probably the best, best place to answer that. Thank you. I'll just highlight that um, we're in the process of preparing a report to update uh, Council on the planning for growth work and that will go into what's happened so far in a bit more detail. So I can answer some broad questions, um, at, you know, and talk to it broadly, but I, I'm just going to highlight that you'll get some more specific information and possibly we can engage on it more at that time. Um, we have Variation 2 on the go that was approved by Council, so a lot of the work um, that's being done is focused on that, but the broad background work required for that, um, which includes all our uh, regular monitoring requirements around um, growth, will also feed into a broader kind of 30-year-plus review of growth work for the city. Um, and that we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in that other report. Uh, so when's that report coming up? Um, we're hoping to have it for the um, council on the 24th. Yes. Okay. Thank if, you. if we can, if we can get it through the process in time. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question on number 26 on parking services. I see that there was um, parking infringement numbers reduced due to staff taking unexpected leave and it looks like there was about 4,000 less tickets issued. Does that have much effect on the budget? After the chair, yes, it will have a, an effect but we, we will make it up by the, by the end of the financial year. Councillor Gary. Um, I have a, two questions. The first one is, do I understand correctly that we're, uh, th that the quality of application when it comes to consents has improved because we're holding the applicants to a higher bar um, and that's why we've got a quicker turnaround? Would that be a fair assessment of the situation currently? As for the chair. Um, the quality of applications varies from the from designer to designer. Um, we have some applications um, recently, even today, was made aware of an application that had 76 RFI points. Now that's unprecedented and we probably should be rejecting those far sooner. RFI? Uh, request for further information. Um, so the quality um, is it varies, as I say. Um, I guess the, the consistent aspect is what then goes out or what is ultimately consented. And that's, I guess, the quality of uh, Councillor Vandervis making the comment around some, some of the designers may think that we're asking for too much information. Um, but, but I guess from a, um, a legislative point of view and ensuring it's compliant and safe, etc., cetera, we're, we're ticking all the right boxes from an accreditation point of view. So if, for example, an application was put in by a designer and it wasn't up to scratch, takes longer, costs the client more, would the client always know that? Um, through the chair, I mean, it depends on the, um, how much of a 
poor application it is. Um, if it's really poor, then we will copy in um, the, the, the client so that they're aware of um, ongoing issues um, and challenges that we face. Um, we don't always do that. It, it's up to the, the consenting officer as to the, whether or not the customer's advised. But certainly if it's a real poor one, we'll either reject it early on, uh, which we're doing more and more of, um, or alternatively, we'll copy in the client to make sure they're aware. Thank you. And I, my second question is around environmental health, so I'm not sure who I... I uh, Mr Blair, um, I, was, I thought it was a very high standard with the number of A-grade um, uh, premises, and I wondered how it compared with other cities. Would you have any idea at all? Through the Chair, I would not be comfortable in ask, answering that off the cuff, but we can certainly um, do some comparisons. And but you presumably know. you... Um, you understand that's a that's a really it, it, excellent it a, result. It, I, is, a, I would it is a good result. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just having a quick look at the shape of the curve on point thirteen, the building consents per month that have been issued. If I'm looking at that sort of eyeballing it, it looks like from about twenty fifteen on, we've gone from about seventy a month to now getting to near to hundred a month. Are they evenly distributed between um, new builds and and say retrofits? In other words, is this reflecting that, in fact, the housing build market is going up? Well, by my back of the envelope calculation, around about 11 per cent a year. Which gets to the planning question. Yeah, if you look at that curve, uh, you just more or less eyeball it. It starts out about 70 a month back here, and it gets up to near 100 a month by the time you get to that. So, so no, I'm afraid I'm not um, equipped to answer with the percentage of new builds versus um, uh, oh, okay. more I, I, a rather simple question. Generally speaking, uh, this is consistent with the idea that with the population growth we're getting, building growth that's okay. going with it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, the, the general inc increase in a um, in number of applications was, was um, being processed yeah, correlates with, with the growth around the city. Yeah. Thank you. Further, <clears throat> further questions? There appear to be none. I'll move the noting of the uh, non-financial report for those six months. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Lord, uh, any discussion? Those in favour, oh, Councillor Lord? Yeah. Well, look, all I just <coughs> want to say is, is the exact point that uh, Jim was illustrating, Councillor uh, O'Malley was illustrating, the fact is that uh, I just wanted to say thank you and congratulations for what you have done. You have turned it around, you have employed more staff, you're doing the job better, but you're also getting more consents through. And things like the dental school and that, you've had some pretty big ones too that have required a lot of work, so I just think that's a hats off. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against no. That's agreed. That takes us to item six, the Draft Waste Minimisation and Management Plan 2020 and the Draft Waste Assessment 2018. Ms Irvine and Mr Henderson. Did you get Councillor Lord, Councillor um, 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 Hall? Welcome. Do you want to make any comment before we um, open the floor for questions? Uh, only that uh, since the last WMMP in 2013, um, which um, I reviewed and looked back, looked back on, um, the transition within this sector at this time is absolutely enormous and ongoing. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Good news. All right, questions, councillors? Councillor Van der Vos. On page 38, um, WMMP 2020 um, amendments, what has changed? There are eight points there which suggest all kinds of sort of paperwork changes, refined goals, etc. Uh, but I understand that there's been no more diverted product than last year. Do you anticipate that these changes are going to produce more diverted product, or do you think that we are really at the mercy of product market? Uh, one of the things this WMP the changes do is it. Um, 
and it puts some structure in, but helps enable the waste futures project. So um, the thinking that's gone into the the waste assessment and the the um, revised WMMP and the targets that have been introduced has been fed into the targets that we're trying to use for the waste futures project. Um, so as things stand at the moment, status quo, no, nothing, nothing will change. But with enhanced possibility of enhanced collection services and enhanced processing, then we would start to divert. And that enhanced processing includes having less contamination and therefore opening up more markets? Is, is that what you're aiming yeah. at? Yeah, so if, uh, if, if that's a decision that's made that Council is going to go with the option to, to put money in, into enhanced uh, material recovery facilities here, yeah, we'd be able to achieve a better quality of product, which would enable um, a, more mar a more marketable product. Further questions, Councillors? Councillor Lord. Yeah, I just had another question, probably for you, Keith, but um, it was just part of Mr Griffin when he spoke earlier today about the museum that they'd made a decision to go for sort of, I suppose you call it barrels of milk in their calf as opposed to plastic bottles to save a lot of plastic bottles. He did make the comment that it is actually a wee bit dearer. Now, I'm just wondering, is it always a case that to do the right thing costs more or can there be things done that, like I think, I applaud the idea, but I can understand why some people would choose to use the more contaminating option. So is it your experience that to do the right thing always costs more? Or? Certainly in putting in place infrastructure or new services, scalability becomes um, the, you know, once, once it grows, you're spreading that cost over greater facilities or over a larger service. So it becomes more affordable as it grows, but when you're starting out, you know, these, these new people who are starting out, they, they're, you know, they've got to recover their costs because they're doing it on a small scale at this time. So, so if all cafes went that way, for example, it might bring the price down to what, no more than what they might have paid anyway. It, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Further questions. There appear to be none. Um, I'll move that we note the, the note the um, sorry approve the draft minimisation and management plan 2020 and the draft waste assessment 2018 for inclusion in the annual plan 2021 process. Um, and no one has suggested any further amendments, so I don't think that is needed to be processed. It's seconded by Councillor Barker. Any discussion? Councillor O'Malley. Um, I actually want to acknowledge um, past Councillor Newell, um, who was part of the committee that was um, formulated this plan. I want to congratulate staff on executing it. And um, I think the other thing to note, and it was kind of mentioned in the question session, is that there is a certain relationship between this plan and the Waste Futures Initiative, and that in fact this plan is setting up the environment through which Waste Futures will be executed. Um, so, well done. Thank you. Um, yes, I'd just like to note that the councillors will have seen a draft submission uh, a couple of weeks ago when you were working through the process. Uh, the draft submission that's before you today is slightly different, um, particularly in the overall tone that we've taken, a bit less supportive, uh, which is the result of on uh, further discussions amongst DCC staff, as well as a review of the Solgum and OSC submissions uh, and a bit more kind of analysis. I think 
what's in this report, it says, I was just trying to find it, it says um, that there's going to be two, that you're saying it would be good if we could get two people to be on a committee. I think is that, that's in this, isn't it? Who, who did you have in mind for that? Have you got any idea of that? Or is it too early to say? No, I think the submission was just um, allowing for two to be appointed mm. and as well to be able to be there when or if the DCC weren't to support mm. the use mm. of these powers. I think it makes sense to put a submission in. I think it's silly not to. And I, I like the tone. I think, you know, I think it's good that you're letting them know that there are some concerns here um, because it is huge what, you know, what the, the powers that they could use. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you for your work on this. And I, overall, I really liked the submission. Uh, I think it strikes the right tone. That said, I did, and correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't see any mention of um, the potential to incorporate regenerative development, which is obviously something that is front and center of most progressive cities in the world now. Is there any reason for not doing that? Um, not particularly. Um, from an earlier uh, thinking from central government on the bill, it was earlier more about housing and it has been extended to more urban regeneration and it's um, now got a lot of different kind of roles it can play um, or which these specified development projects can apply to. Um, we, we, we can support that, I guess. Uh, we didn't have any strong feelings on it as a whole. So, I mean, regenerative development is sort of um, one of its primary ways of being exposed is through urban development. Um, I'm sorry if people here don't understand what regenerative development is. Um, can I briefly explain? I'll be very quick. Uh, regenerative development is a desire um, within modern societies where we aspire to be carbon neutral. We know regenerative development has a goal of developing in ways that we can actually be carbon negative. So you build buildings that actually um, enhance the environment. A good example would be um, a, 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 a organic f um, plantings atop of a hospital and you feed the patients or you have greenery outside buildings. You see that very much in places like Singapore or Malaysia. Well, uh, um, would you like some sort of wording to be added to the submission to yeah, capture well, I, that I, issue? Yeah, and I thought it, maybe it could just be incorporated in the other comments at the end. I mean, that's where I noted perhaps it could just be a, a, a mention of it. Would you have a look at that and find yeah, some appropriate be... wording? Does any, anyone have any issue with what's suggested? That sounds good. Thank you. In which case, is someone prepared to move the submission with that amendment, uh, His Worship, seconded by Councillor O'Malley? Any comment? Yeah, if I might, uh, briefly, and, and thanks staff uh, for the work, and I appreciate the difficulty in managing the uh, the tone. I think you've done a tremendous job, but we're not alone in facing these uh, challenges. The country as a whole is decades behind in providing the infrastructure to support a population that we have. Earlier on in this century, we were <coughs> expected to hit a population of five million around 2040, and I think we got there in October. Uh, or November, and so you know, there's no doubt that we have uh, challenges in terms of providing uh, for the population that we have. But I, th I, I'm su I support this because of the <coughs> caution that staff have taken around making sure that we don't um, we can't, can't support housing solutions at any cost, and that there's a real risk that in trying to address the short-term housing issues, we exacerbate our longer-term env environmental ones, both in terms of what we are building and where from a um, you know, quality of, of building and, and town planning uh, point of view. Um, and <laughs> I, I appreciate the, um, the, the, the subtle commentary around uh, the suggestion in the bill as drafted that if council don't support these proposals, then you don't get a seat at the table when uh, they are designed, which I think is um, a little brutish. Uh, and so I, I appreciate that message being received. I'm sure we won't be alone in the territorial authorities in sending that message back for the drafting. But uh, thank you for, for the work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Councillor O'Malley. Um, yeah, I, I like this, this submission too. And I think it, it captures what His Worship touched on. And that is that we want to make sure that we don't get caught up in the whirlwind 
um, that that pressures on other cities and their idea of what the outcome should be does not end up getting imposed upon us. Um, so I, I very much like the language that is used. I think that brooks that word of caution in there. Um, and um, let's see what this goes to. Thank you. I'll put it. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, no. That's agreed. Uh, just before we go to the last item, items for consideration, it's long been there, just on this matter and in general the question of presentations to two select committees. Um, it's long been the policy that we had, if practicable, um, that we present in person either at a senior staff level or if the mayor happens to be or someone appropriate happens to be in Wellington or Christchurch or if, if they're not coming here, which generally isn't the case, I'm assuming that that will be, um, that attitude will continue to prevail if we can. Right, that's fine. Uh, that takes us to the final item. Are there any matters that people wish to raise for consideration? There appearing to be none. I'll close the meeting. Thank you for your forbearance and efficiency. Uh, and the Mayor, how long do you want? <laughs> two, <laughs> two minutes or four, mi waiting. four minutes for the council meeting? We we're, trying to, we're getting the financial controller over, so we do need five, five, five minutes. minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you.